Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today we're going to be talking more about the underscores starter theme. Now, you saw in the last video, we installed this theme, we created it using their generator and enabled it, and as you can see, there's not a lot here. However, there is more than meets the eye. For instance, underscores has included a little bit of JavaScript that when your page is the right width, it uh, hides your menu and in return gives you a menu button uh, that you can click to show and hide your menu. Now what this is, is really just a shortcut because uh, most responsive sites need a way to show and hide the navigation. So this is really just taking care of that for you. And it's really, you know, while it's super bare bones and doesn't look like anything, uh, like the rest of the theme, it's totally open to customization and it really just requires you to use CSS to create it. Now, we have our theme here and it looks pretty similar to what we saw before. We have our, uh, our site title, we have our tagline, we have our main menu, and then we have our posts. Now we also have these widgets showing up and you might be wondering, well, how are these widgets showing up? Well, it turns out that our widget that we created in these videos was named Sidebar and the widget they include in this theme is also named Sidebar. So these widgets just happened to transfer over. If we come here and disable them, they'll be gone. Um, however, we can throw something in here just so we can have something in the the sidebar. And if you'll notice, the sidebar isn't on the side. That's because this uh, theme assumes nothing about your layout. But if we inspect this element, and let's look down here, you'll see that we have our content area, then we have a primary content area, and then a secondary content area. So if we were to have the primary content area, uh, let's say a width of 70%, and we want this to float right. Now in our secondary, we can say float left and width of 30%. And you can see our sidebar is going to tuck up in here like you would expect a sidebar to. Uh, likewise, you could have this flow right in the other way and then it would show up on the right side. But what's nice is basically it gives you nice, clean HTML that you can absolutely customize and change with your CSS and uh, further HTML and PHP customizations. So let's take a look at the files here to see what you actually get. So in our files here, we have this ink folder and the ink is basically just to include some uh, things that might help us out like we have some custom template tags. Of course, uh, these things are for the more uh, serious PHP developer. If you are using uh, PHP, then by all means, paw through these and see exactly what they're doing. Uh, we're not gonna go over them just quite yet. Um, next we have JS, which gives us some custom JavaScript. So we had this navigation JS, and this is basically what's showing and hiding our menu that we saw using the width of the web page to make a mobile type navigation. So it's basically just handling the toggling. Cool. So uh, we also have some this customizer theme customizer makes for a better user experience. Right. So basically, theme customizer allows us to customize the theme without actually uh, writing any code. We can do that using the WordPress interface using customize. Now we could say background color be this color, right? Save and publish. However, I would honestly totally recommend against this, especially if you're using a starter theme to build your theme uh, out of the box. You know, if you're using your theme to build it like this, then you might as well just write your CSS. Now in the languages folder, we have this languages, this wordpress.pot file, and we're gonna go over more about what exactly this is doing, but it's for translating your website. Now we have our page templates like you've seen before. So we have our 404 page, which has actually been customized to have a search form. Uh, it lets you say that, you know, hey, there's, there's nothing found on this page. It's actually a nice little 404 page. Um, likewise, we have what you'd expect 
from articles, comment none, page, this sort of stuff. Basically, our templates, like you would see them normally, but what's really nice about these templates is that they've been crafted to use a uh, really nice semantic HTML5. Um, and I believe 2014 has nice HTML5 as well, but you know, who knows with some WordPress themes what you're getting. You might be getting some old HTML or something. And what we see here is pretty much what we'd expect to see within these templates. Now, if we come into our functions.php, you can scroll down and there's going to be lots of comments here so you can read about what these are doing, these functions, right? Uh, but some things might look familiar, right? Like if we scroll down here, you're gonna see a register sidebar with the name of sidebar and an action that hooks into widgets and knit. So uh, this is the type of thing that we went over in the past couple of videos, how to write this yourself. And here you're seeing it in action in a theme that we've just downloaded. So that's pretty cool. Uh, this is a great place to learn about some things that you can do in these uh, functions files just to see what other people are doing. Now you can see it's adding these uh, custom template tags and it's grabbing some custom functions and then grabbing the customizer stuff. So basically it's just uh, making a nice little additions, adding uh, our widget area and basically setting up our site with a menu. Now the header file is going to be also looking familiar and we have a under ink, we have a custom header.php and it says you can add the optional custom header image to uh, header.php like so. So it's basically saying, hey, you can grab this code right here and throw it into your header.php if you'd rather use the header image instead of no header image. So that's nice that they include that for you um, in case you wanted to go that route so you don't have to write that code yourself. Now everything else should also look pretty standard. Um, and we have a nice little readme that basically just goes over some of their features. It tells you how to manually create a theme in case you didn't use their generator. And let's just take a look at the styles. Now the styles, uh, the style.css files is actually really nice because what it does is it contains just enough CSS for the site to not look terrible, but it doesn't contain too much to where it's going to get in the way. Another thing that I really like is that it sets it up in a really nice structure. Now I personally structure my CSS files differently than this. Uh, so I would change some things. However, uh, they certainly do a nice job of organizing things by giving it, you know, the correct um, uh, theme settings and, and you have your description text down here. But they also have a table of contents that shows you the different sections of the CSS with proper uh, headings here so you can find things really easily. Now I also make a table of contents in most of my CSS files and I would recommend you do too as well for uh, even larger medium sites. Um, sometimes I don't bother with really small projects but most of the time uh, anybody, if anybody's looking at your CSS afterwards, a table of contents is really helpful for them to be able to know exactly where to find things. And it also makes things searchable in case you wanted to find navigation, you could just command F and search for 5.0. It's going to take you directly to the navigation. Now you'll see here that we don't have a ton of CSS, but sometimes they just give us classes, right? So if we want to uh, style specific things like the anchor tag in the main navigation when you hover over, the classes are already here and you just have to add in your CSS. Now this might save you a little bit of time. I personally would probably just rather it be blank. However, uh, if, if you're the type that you know you don't want to look that stuff up, then it's all here for you. And it's really nice because like I said, there's nothing really crazy here. It's uh, just some basic CSS to make your stuff look a little bit better. And it also organizes it so that you can just start adding your code uh, and having this document structure already made for you. Now what else do we have? It was We have this layouts folder. And you'll see we have two sample layouts, content sidebar and sidebar uh, content. And now these are just two different sample layouts, but you'll see they're not really doing a whole lot. It's giving some margin, floating, and giving a width. 
Um, and this one is likewise doing something very similar. Now, if you want to use either of these themes, I mean, one thing you could do is, uh, or these layouts, is you could copy this code directly from this content sidebar, look at your CSS file, um, find where we want, maybe, um, maybe we can have it in, in content, uh, or we might maybe even make a new section that says layouts or something, but let's look at 10.0, let's find that. And since this is a, I mean, I guess this is technically a layout. We're just gonna post this here, save this, and now let's refresh the front end of our site. And you'll see we do have a sidebar layout already initialized, so that way we can just do more styling to take it from there. Now, I personally would write my own, and I would probably use a grid frame or, or something to align these divs to a grid, however, um, if you don't like working with the layouts or anything like that, it's there for you just to paste in. Okay, so this is the basics of underscores. Uh, from here, all you really have to do is modify your CSS, modify the PHP templates like we showed in previous customizing videos, and you can be on your way to coding your theme. As always, if you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video below or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook. Uh, let us know what you want to see or hear from us. We love to hear from you. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.